All right, here we go. We have a West Coast legend in the building. Huh. And this is actually a very full circle moment because the first time I actually picked up a video camera and put it out was with Game. Yeah, 20 that's years a ago. Long time ago, man. The Devil's Advocate. Doctor's Advocate. You said the Devil's Advocate. The Devil's Dan Advocate. Too. The Doctor's Advocate was your project, but the Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The mixtape, the mixtape and DVD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, me, and New Jersey Devil yeah. was the Devil's Advocate. Uh -huh. That was the first yeah, DVD right. project I ever put out about whole life. Uh -huh. And that set me on a journey that, you know, where I am today. Yeah, I always see you, man. I always, you know, give you that virtual uh, pat on your back. You know, you're doing well, man. Thank you, man. You as well. You know, yeah. 20 years later, we're both healthy. That's it. You man. know what I'm saying? We're both still alive. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> you know? are not. That's the most important That's thing. That's the most important alive, thing. Man. Well, man, I'm glad you're doing well. And this is our first real sit-down interview. We've done things here and there, but this is the first time we're really sitting down seriously and getting the whole story. Yeah, I mean, well, back then, you know, technically, if you wasn't like Oprah or something, like people wasn't really sitting down doing interviews, you know, True. especially not in hip-hop. We had to catch each other on the streets and, you mm -hmm. know, exchange a few, you know, pleasantries on camera and get what we can get because, we, you know, everybody was in motion, you know? Yep, yep. Well, it's a different age now. Yeah, it's definitely different, man. Well, I want to start at the very, very beginning. Born and raised in Compton. Yeah. Okay. Now, your parents, weren't they both Crips? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, tell me what it was like growing up during that time. Growing up in, in, uh, in Compton in the 80s was, uh, you know, looking back at it, it's kind of crazy. You know, you, you could, uh, it sort of has uh, like a third world uh country uh essence to it if you look back into it because it was so much going on um and you you didn't really process it because it was just everyday life so it's like you know when i was i was telling somebody not long ago i can remember being seven years old walking like two miles to school you know in compton walking two miles to school in the second grade and holding my little sister's hand who was five years old she going to kindergarten i'm going to second grade just the amount of neighborhoods and gang, you know, and gang environments we walk through just to get to school every day, you know, was just, you know, crazy. Cause like these days as an adult, you know, you can't even, you can't even make that walk as an adult, but you know, yeah. we had, it was kids doing that. And still to this day, you know, Compton is like that. It's just, is what it is, man. And I mean, you know, seeing, uh, you know, smokers, crack, you know, crackheads just, you know, and dapping them up and them knowing your name. And I don't know, man, it was just a different time, but it was so much going on. So the violence, the violence was there, but you were just accustomed to it because it was what it was. I, I can remember watching, uh, you know, being in the house watching A Team or watching cartoons and hearing gunshots ring out and not even flinch. Mm. And if you think about it psychologically for a child, um, that's traumatizing. You know what I'm saying? It should be traumatizing. Um, but you know, when that's what you're accustomed to, it just is what it is. So, you know, um, my early start um, was just like that. I was accustomed to seeing, uh, you know, cocaine around the house and, you know, needles in the, uh, you know, in the gutter and just, you know, dead bodies in the streets. I've seen tons of them as a kid and it wasn't no thing. So how many kids were in the household originally? You and how many siblings? Um, me, it was me. My three sisters, uh, two of my brothers, at, you know, at times, because they were, you know, four or five years older than me. So they was, you know, out in the streets, running the streets. And then my dad, whenever he wasn't in jail, but, you know, mostly my mom's. Okay. And Big Face, that's your half-brother? Yeah, that's when we got the same dad, different mothers. Got it. So was he in the house or no? We grew up together. I mean, it's like his mom and my mom's, my mom's house and his mom's house. Um, before I was born, his dad was with his, with his mom, you know, primarily when I was born um, and my little sister was born and my dad was with us. But the house is, like I said, it wasn't, but shit, I don't know, like not even a mile apart. So he could go, you know, you know how it is when you're a man and you're bouncing around doing your thing. Like yeah. he was back and forth from house to house. So, um, yeah, we grew up together because he would be at my house or I would go over there and be at, you know, his house and same thing. So it's kind of like we grew up together um, under the same roof, if, if it makes sense, because it's just around the corner, you know. Now, you ended up in foster care at one point? Yeah, I ended up in foster care because, you know, my parents got into, you know, a few different, you know, domestic, you know, domestic things. And uh, the uh, social workers came in and, you know, deemed it, you know, not, uh, you know, a healthy environment for children. So they took us out. Um, when I was in the third or fourth grade and then I didn't come back, I didn't get released to my mom's, um, till I was probably in like first year of high school or something like that. Wow. Okay. So you get taken out of your home. Yeah. And what was it? Your other siblings also get, got everybody, put, everybody got yeah, put everybody in foster got care. Removed, yeah. I'm sure that was devastating. 
It was devastating, man. It was, um, I can remember looking out the back window as my house got smaller and uh, yeah. just crying out, you know, like tears, tears, tears. And uh, I got switched around from foster home to foster home uh, for, you know, like three or four times before I settled um, at this one on the outskirts of uh, like Carson, uh, if you're familiar with Carson, California. Yeah. Um, and in a neighborhood that was like, uh, you know, uh, predominantly Crips, like the one I was, you know, grew up in, which was Santana Block, same thing, um, basically. But yeah, man, um, being in a foster home, I had a rough start because uh, every day I just thought about how much I missed, um, you know, I missed being with my mom and, you know, just missed my environment, when, you know, the things that I was used to, my friends, my school and stuff like that. So um, I think after the first six months, I, I stopped really crying and I built this wall that's, that I still like got in me today. You know, I hear it a lot from my kids' moms about how, you know, uh, tough or brick wall or cold I can be at times. And, and I just don't have a filter for uh, either pain or sensitivity at times just because I had to stop basically giving a fuck to cope. You get what I'm saying? As a child. And so once I built that wall up, I wasn't no more, uh, I wasn't really looking for my mother to come through the door and pick me up no more. So I, I mean, I thugged it out. It would kind of, it's kind of like, um, if you were locked up in, in prison, you know, for the first time and, and for the first week, you know, you cried and just couldn't understand why you couldn't get out of this cage. But after that, you already know you got to toughen up. You got time. You got a date and you know it ain't soon. And so you got to just get straight um, with what's going on and kind of just adapt to it. And so that's what I did as a kid. I mean, I've interviewed a lot of people that went through the foster care system. Um, and most times there was some level of abuse that happened. Did you go through that? Um, abuse as far as like any type of abuse. Like uh, parental or what? Well, just, you know, a lot of times the, these foster parents don't really care about the kids. They're just oh, getting a check. Abuse in the foster home. Exactly. Now yeah. I had, I had, once I landed um, with Auntie Esther, that's what we called her. Mm -hmm. um, once I landed with Auntie Esther, man, she treated us all with love and care. And I got lucky that nice. I landed in her home because from the time that I landed there um, to the time that I, you know, departed, like she was like, uh, really like an aunt. And uh, so that's why we called her Auntie Esther. And every child um, that came through there, she treated with love. And some she even adopted on her own mm. um, and took, you know, took in as as her own. And she treated us all the same. And so the biggest, uh, I think the biggest, um, the biggest thing about being in a foster home was having uh, multi um, ethnic uh, brothers, right? Foster brothers. Cause I go to school and it would be like Paul and Nathan, they were white kids. And then I would have uh, Chris and, um, I would have Chris and um, Calvin, which were, you know, two uh, Spanish kids, two Mexicans. So at home, they was my brother. So when we went to school and somebody used to say, ah, uh -huh, you know, you got a Mexican brother. Ah, uh -huh, you got a white brother. We had to we had to square up and we had to go to toes because, you know, I loved them like there's my brothers. And that, and that's the type of camaraderie and the brother we, brotherhood we had in the foster home. We fought like brothers on the inside. But then on the outside, we had to um, we had to like, you know, stand up and hold each other down. Um, only, I think only two of, uh, the six of us are alive mm. at this point. Um, because, you know, once we got, you know, once we got into our teenage years, everybody veered off and joined gangs and, you know what I'm saying? So, um, few, few, few of us, you know, got murdered out in the streets and a few of us, like I said, still alive. I think me, might be just me, Chris and, uh, Nathan. You guys still keep in touch? Uh, yeah, I talked to him. I talked to Nathan uh, a few, few days ago. He went through a little... Um, uh, you know, battle with uh, drug addiction and shit like that. But he, you know, he doing well now. Um, so 